I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do some resist dyeing on sock yarn. This is Dyer Supplier's older two-ply superwash sock yarn base. It is 100% superwash merino. Uh, Dyer Supplier is reconfiguring their supply stream, so this exact base is no longer available. And I don't know what Dyer Supplier's timeline is for releasing new yarn bases. I know they're reconfiguring that, but uh, when I know anything, of course, I will share. But anyway, this base is super soft and I'm excited to dye it up today. I have added on a removable nylon zip tie onto each of the skeins just to keep things from getting tangled. It makes it easier to untangle the yarn uh, once it's dry at the end. And so that's something I always like to do. But we are gonna be using more zip ties to add some resist points on our yarn because my plan today is to start dyeing the dry yarn just as it is uh, to dye a layer over it and then I want to take some colors and speckle uh, in the resist points which I have done similar things before uh, not necessarily with dry powder but I have used paint eyedroppers and things to add like little drops and sort of the uh, in the negative space and so yeah I am just going to continue to add zip ties on to this yarn pulling it tight so that way we will well, that one broke. Pulling it tight so that way we will have some undyed yarn uh, present in the end. As I continue to add zip ties, pulling them tight, I figured it was worth asking if you have checked out the video description on my video today. I fill the descriptions with links and affiliate links to the items that I'm using in my videos to try to make it easy for you to replicate my results at home. I also try to list all the names of the colors that I use and things like that, again, to make that information as easy for you to find as possible. I am an affiliate marketer with Knit Crate, Dyer Supplier, Amazon, and a few other companies, and I always clearly mark affiliate links with an asterisk down in the video description. I did something a little fun near one of the ends. On one half of the yarn, I added two zip ties close together and I did one across both. In general, when I'm adding resists, I like to try to make things be non-repeating and I'm not entirely sure why that's something I try, but it is what I try. I'm now going to add all of the yarn into my pan. Now, I attempted to add the zip ties in approximately the same place, uh, but there will be obvious differences between all of these skeins. Uh, and yeah, 400 grams is a tiny bit tight in the pan, but since we have the resist marks, that compresses the yarn a little bit, so we still have a fair amount of surface area to work with. For our dye, I have some fluorescent fuchsia and cabernet. And these are both Dharma acid dyes. These are older dye stocks. They were 1% stock solutions. And one of the reason why I am picking to start here is that we might then get some breaking uh, because this pink is very likely to spread a lot more than a Cabernet. Now, Cabernet is a very pigmented color. And I'm adding it to just some plain tap water. Oof, look at that dye travel down. And so we'll see after this first initial bit how pigmented things are. I do have a whole other stock of Cabernet, uh, so we might add more to it as well. And I'm undecided if I want to stir this up or not. Uh, it's slowly traveling through, but it does give me a little bit of like a like tequila sunrise or something vibe um, because it's almost like it's floated, but actually now it is spreading all the way down. So I may not mix it entirely, but it will get fairly mixed on the yarn. All right, in the minute that I just move the pan over, the colors have mostly, mostly sort of mixed. And here's the thing with dyeing a yarn base that I'm a little less familiar with. Uh, it, this is not that absorbent. You can see that as I poured the dye on, the yarn pretty much just floated 
right away. And so it did not uh, sort of sink into the yarn immediately. This is good and bad. Um, the good is that this means that our resist points will probably stay fairly resisted, but the bad is that it's just going to take a little bit more effort and therefore pushing, which might move some of this color into the resist points. So it's just going to take a little bit more effort uh, to get the dye onto the yarn. But I'm going to sort of set this to the side a little bit and we'll mix up some more dye to add on. Okay, with our water this time, I'm going to add some acid. Two, three, four, five tablespoons of white vinegar. That's a fair amount of acid, but this should hopefully help uh, keep some of our resist uh, present um, for when we go and decide to eventually speckle on this. So I think I'm gonna use the rest of this bottle of Cabernet. A lot of times I like the outside resist color to be really pigmented, but it is okay if it's not. It is okay if the color is not that pigmented, but I'm still probably gonna rinse this bottle out for a third layer of dye. But let's bring the yarn deck over. All right, let's try this again. This time it is a lot less pink. We've got a lot more red than I'm seeing, and we now have closer to 16 cups of water present in here. And now you can see a color that is looking a bit deeper. And so, ooh, it's very, very like red, very cranberry. This will be really fun to help pick uh, the color that I'm gonna do over it. But I do have a tiny regret still. It probably would have been best with this particular yarn base to just start with it uh, not dry. I should have pre-soaked it. But I don't like adding resists onto wet yarn that's wet already, so you know, parts good, parts bad. Uh, we may end up with some more resist in here from not where the zip ties are, just because the yarn was dry to start. Uh, you can see a lot of variation in the color uh, from this outside layer, which honestly, I'm not that mad at. Uh, but where I just added some of that more recent color with the vinegar, uh, you could see some deepness uh, that has struck there pretty quickly. So I think, oh goodness, yeah, color is definitely striking. I think what I'm going to do now is let this sit and soak now that we mostly have it sort of covered and submerged uh, before adding a little bit more color. I think I want to do that just to give it some time to sort of pre-soak a little bit uh, and then I will after 20 minutes I will come back and I think we'll rinse this out to add the rest of that onto the yarn but we're probably done with the fuchsia. The color has sunk in really really nicely and so now I'm just coming in with a little bit of this Cabernet that I rinsed from the bottle and interestingly it is a lot less rosy without the pink in there, um, which is fun. And I don't mind having a few other hues in there um, because we were wondering if things would break anyway. But now I'm gonna take this over to the stove and start heating things up. I just turned the stove on and there's no way things are hot yet. So I have time to do a little bit more of a press, but actually a lot of the color is in the yarn already. Um, and so that is just good to see and good to know. Um, so we are gonna let this heat. The yarn doesn't need to heat for a full 30 minutes because we are gonna be dyeing another layer and so we will be applying heat after that. But I do want all of this color to absorb so that way we can maintain those resist points that we added. It's been about 20 minutes. And there is still some pink in the water, likely because of the fluorescent fuchsia that I had added. Um, but I'm gonna turn off the heat now and let the yarn cool, maybe not completely here in the pan, but for a long time in the pan until 
I can comfortably handle the yarn. Our yarn had cooled completely, so I squeezed out as much of the water as I could without stretching or twisting the yarn too much, and then started removing the zip ties that were on tightly, leaving on the one that was there as a tie, a loose tie, to help make sure that I didn't tangle the yarn. Right here, I have some evidence, some concrete evidence of some color transfer from a zip tie, something that I had recently been wondering if was happening, but I hadn't been sure. And so, yeah, this is not something that I'm used to happening because I use zip ties that have tons of color on them all the time. I suppose it's possible that there's some that I just didn't wash or soak well enough after removing from yarn. And this is something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on because this is not something that happens a lot. That little oops did help me settle on a color palette. And I think I wanna use some intense iris and sea spray for the speckles. And so now we're gonna get set up to do some countertop speckles. Before speckling, I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. I grabbed a skein of Knit Pick Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino, and went and soaked this yarn in the dye bath we had actually used for our pinky purple color. I removed this and had it just off camera to use as a yarn mop as I started speckling mostly into our white areas with the Intense Iris and Sea Spray dye. When I was done with a round of speckles, I would wipe my fingers onto the yarn mop and then make sure that my fingers were really dry before going into another color because I did not want to introduce moisture into the dye containers. I flipped the yarn multiple times to expose other areas where I thought I might want more color. And then when I was satisfied with the color coverage, I went and I put the yarn in my steamer basket to steam set for 30 minutes. I was not concerned if any of the dye ended up on the more purple sections. It's okay if there was a little bit of spread here, but I did try to focus the speckles as much as possible on the white sections of yarn. It might have been a little easier to do this low immersion uh, because then I would have seen the color a little bit more, but we've got some heavy speckles. There's still some patches of white, uh, but it's a fun yarn. And you can see we do have, a, well, maybe you can't really see, but there is some color transfer uh, from where the yarn was laying on top of itself, but I was okay with that when I decided not to wrap the yarn in plastic wrap. And, oof, the sea spray and dark iris look so good together, so pretty. Now I'm going ahead and popping our yarn mop into the steamer basket, uh, so I can also steam set this for 30 minutes, let everything cool, and then we'll wash the yarn. Let's wash our yarn. All together, all together. And I'm gonna add a little bit of some dish soap in here as well. Uh, normally I don't wash 500 grams of yarn together, but today I figured why not? And what I see now is what I always like to see. Well, maybe I'm seeing a little bit of some color. Darn, I was like, ooh, I'm seeing what I like to see. Oh, never mind. Um, all right, I'm gonna fill this up with water again, and then I'm actually gonna leave the yarn to soak in here for a little bit because since we were dealing with dry dye powder, uh, it's possible that there could be some undissolved dye on here, and so why not soak everything really well? So, I'll be back in five, 10 minutes or so. All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, much better, much, much, much better. I'm not seeing much of anything in there now. So I am going to go ahead and do a couple more rinses, rinse out the last of that soap, and then put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. I think I really like the process of doing resist dyeing and then adding color into the negative space after the fact. I do struggle a little bit with speckling without sort of overdoing it at times in these little patches because I didn't want to leave none. I definitely wanted there to be some. And so that that is something I struggled with, 
But honestly, the heavy speckling looks so good and I think it's gonna knit up really, really fun. There are definitely some strands that have less speckling and some that have more, uh, but hopefully there'll be some good variety throughout the skein. I think this kind of colorway would be really, really fun with uh, even some fewer of the patches, maybe only like three or something. So that way there would be a longer section of just the more semi-solid tonal kind of color and that would break up all of these colors a little bit more, making them be little tiny patches overall. But I don't know, let me know what you might do differently with this type of colorway. This two-ply yarn is so, so soft. There's elements of it that looking at it really remind me a little bit of Knit Picks palette. Uh, that is not nearly as soft, it's Peruvian Highland wool, and it's really good for color work because it has, because it has grip to it. But I really do like superwash yarn, and I don't always have a need for the nylon content, and so this is so nice. It's too bad that I can't buy more of this particular base, because I really do like it. I do have a few more skeins of it in my stash, though. I really like this color combination, and I'm enjoying the fact that the speckles are a lot deeper than the color that we have over overall. It would be a lot of fun to do this where sort of the predominant color was really dark and then the speckles were a little bit more bright, but doing this in sort of a different way than is the way I often think about it is really, really fun as well. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for hand dyed yarn that has been featured in my videos. I think it adds an extra fun layer to work with yarn when you can watch exactly how it was dyed. Also in the shop are pre-orders for the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. I think this combination of colors isn't necessarily that new for me, but the something about it just really, really makes me happy. I feel like I have a crutch and tend to go for the same color combinations over and over. Even though I know I am doing different things, sometimes it just feels that way. So if there are any colors you would like to see me play with, please leave them in the comments below. I almost forgot about our yarn mop. The mop is predominantly purple, but is soft and pretty. And I love that I can still see some white behind. It hasn't all been overtaken by our more teal and purple. I'm now regretting that the yarn mop is on a different base, even though you can totally mix and match bases. Mixing a fingering weight yarn with a DK weight yarn is a little bit harder, but it is possible. If you are holding a fingering weight yarn double, I think that it depends on the thickness, honestly. It could work with DK, or maybe it might work better with a worsted. So it is absolutely possible to uh, play around with different yarn bases. It just helps if they're a little bit closer to the same weight. But anyway, I think that this mop pairs really beautifully with our main colorway from today. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. You can pre-order the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn samplers today. Over Hanukkah, every night, there will be a new yarn dyeing video, and these samplers have a wrapped mini skein that you can open up while watching the video to see exactly how it was dyed, and then you can swatch and play with the yarn to see how different techniques result in different types of colorways that you can play with. Check out the links in the video description, or head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop to learn more.